Well, hey there you awesome bipeds, quadrupeds, and even the occasional dinosaurs. It is I, Little Wolf, and welcome to my den. Go ahead and come on in, but please wipe your paws before entering, and go ahead and take a seat by the fire. The cauldron is bubbling, so you can have your choice of tea, coffee, or hot chocolate. And it is now Friday, and I have been kind of doing some gameplays lately and I do have a few that I've lined up on the back burner and I'm going through them one by one and just trying to figure out which one I want to do. Uh, Super Ghost, I'm still playing Granny and still trying to get better at it, but like I said, I really suck at those games so it's going to be a bit before I actually make that a video. But I figured, hey, let's go ahead and jump into this and try and figure out what happens in space with zombies. And I know that's kind of weird to hear, uh, especially on mobile games. I know there are a bunch of, like, uh, first-person shooter games with zombies where you get money, upgrade guns, and everything else. And that's always kind of fun, but a lot of times the... Uh, scenarios are a bit short you know maybe two three minutes worth of gameplay per round or whatever and so it can get kind of boring pretty quick so i tried to find some different ones where they're kind of nintendo-ish and they would be fun and i definitely found a couple of them here but, you know, before we jump into that, if you ever feel like you need help with anything and you can't talk to your friends or your family, always feel free to hit me up on my Swordsman Discord or my Little Wolf's Discord. And if I'm not there, I definitely know there are a bunch of people in there that would be willing to sit down and lend an ear if you ever feel like you just need to vent, get something off your chest, or anything like that. But if you don't think you can do that, you can always hit up the U.S. Suicide Hotline number, if you're in the U.S., of course. And the number is 1-800-273-8255. Once again, that's 1-800-273-8255. And if you're into texting more, you can always hit them up at 741-741. And if you're in any other country out there, you can always hit up the website suicide.org backslash international hyphen suicide hyphen hotlines dot html. And they'll give you a list of all the other countries out there and websites and numbers that you can hit up if you ever feel the need to talk to anybody. Okay, and like I was saying, I did find a fun game where you're in space, you're in a big spaceship, and you're also trying to kill zombies and try and figure out what's going on. And to me, it kind of has like a weird, like, what if they made Dead Space for Nintendo? But, I mean, without some of the other monsters, these ones are just zombies. Or maybe, like, a Resident Evil in space type thing. So, it's definitely got that appeal for me. And it does have kind of RPG elements where once you level up, you can get your character stronger, faster. Um, they can regenerate life a little bit easier. And that's always more fun. Okay, so, the game itself is called Endurance Dead Space Premium, and I think the name is Creata... Creatopus? I want to say that's the name of the group that made it. Okay, so, let's jump into the Oracle real quick and see what this game is about. Looking for an action-packed space shooter game with a mystery story? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're after retro games with the dungeon setting. Or perhaps your aim is to find something old-school like 8-bit games but with RPG elements. If so, then Endurance Inspection in Space is the best choice for you. With the premium version differences, you have no ads, no in-app purchases, and no leaderboards. 
It also says here, Endurance in Infection in Space is a prequel to Ailment, another space-slash-dungeon pixelated game with a mystery story. Play it, and forget about the other shooting games. Mystery Plot The second dungeon shooter will tell you a story of what happened before the events of Ailment. You don't have to play Element before, though. You're a researcher on the starship Endurance, and one day your space team gets an infection and becomes insane. Your goal. You have to survive in this labyrinth slash dungeon mystery ship and find out what happened to the space team. How did this infection spread around the Endurance ship? And rescue your crewmates. You'll be fighting with your former colleagues, and you'll be trying to survive this bullet rush nightmare with tons of guns. Second Game Settings Endurance Infection in Space has a retro mystery ambiance with labyrinth slash dungeon levels as one of the 2D pixelated games with bullet rush battles. It also has horror elements, which makes the mystery story even more engaging. If you love shooting games, you have to try Endurance. Multiple playing options. You can play using a gamepad, as is one of those controllers supporting supported games. Endurance is a game you shouldn't miss if you love shooting games with thrilling gameplay and a plot that you won't get enough of. Your sports. Yeah, 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 my words are good. I'm goodly with words, I'm sorry. In this bullet rush game, you'll be surrounded by your space team. Livable and talkable characters, which are going to break a bit of this horror game ambiance to relax you and prepare for the hardcore battles with your enemies who have gotten infected. The weapons. There's a huge arsenal of guns that you can use to defeat the whole army of your infected space team. To discover the whole mystery story of how this infection appeared on the Labyrinth starship, the this this 2D shooter is full of references to many sci-fi movies as well. And now, just to sum up all the great gameplay features this for this space shooter. It has tons of weapons, retro ambiance, hardcore gameplay, mystery story, 2D pixel art graphics, atmospheric music, dungeon labyrinth-like levels, one of the one of the controller supported games. So if you choose among a thousand of bullet rush games or shooter games, and you're a fan of 2D pixel games, retro games, indie games, controller supported games, labyrinth slash dungeon games with RPG elements, you need to stop doing whatever you're doing and download Endurance now. And I would actually agree with this, because there are a lot of games out there where they do have like the old Nintendo style graphics or Game Boy graphics and they have a little bit of like RPG elements to it but the story just kind of can be lacking and things like that so I I played through so many of these types of games and I just fell in love with this one Endurance and I highly suggest that you pick it up if you get the chance you can pick it up for free and you'll get commercials in it and I thought I had paid for this one. I could have sworn I did. But I think I do have some commercials in the gameplay of this. And I'm going to go through at least the first three levels of this. Just to give you an idea of what's it, what it's about. So, go ahead and sit back and grab your beverage of choice. And whatever snack you would like to have. Snuggle up under your blanket. And let's jump into space and kill some zombies. Welcome to Endurance. So let's go ahead and pick our character. Oh wait, let's go ahead and restart it so I can go from the beginning. Sam Ferguson. Samantha Edwards. Samuel Burton. Samantha Edwards. Blah, blah, 
which one has the better? Let's try this one. Spaceship Endurance. Look at the size of that ship, that'd be kind of cool. Mission Variety of Medical Researches. Crew members 2,504. Crew members alive. One. Dun dun dun. Status on alert. All that, though, that just looks so much more. All of the blood and all of the things are just going wrong. Okay, please don't bother me, I'm walking here. Yeah, it's kind of cool, you can raise up credits, and the more credits you have, you can buy different upgrades for your character, so that's always kind of cool. And I always like trying to get the regeneration of health up there a lot quicker, and I try to get the trap detector. And that's one of the things I love about this game, is that in almost each room there's different lockers that you can look into, and you'll get either credits, or health, or a different gun, or um, a kit to be able to fix your gun, or you'll get things like movement plus 5% uh, or something like that, so that's always cool. I'm sorry, I'm talking over them talking. a room full of like three black people and it's in a horror movie or a horror game or a story isn't it like one of those uh stereotypes that the black one dies first so maybe i picked the wrong character i mean i don't want to be insensitive or anything but that's just the way how hollywood portrays it so Oh, yeah, and when you start off, you don't start off with an actual weapon, you can only just punch people, which is kind of interesting. And the good thing is, you don't have to, like, completely hit the right side of the screen so much, you can just hold it and it'll attack for you. I just love this kind of a game because, I mean, I believe it changes each time you play, I'm not too sure, I'll have to try it again just to make sure, but you have to just make it through each area and what you're trying to do is, if you look at the map, there will be like a big red uh, square and that's the area you're trying to head to to get out of here. But along the way, of course, there are going to be locked doors, and your path is going to be blocked by different things. And there's going to be booby traps later on that you have to try and get around, so it's definitely not easy. I mean, especially when you come across the booby traps that are invisible unless you have a high enough detection rating. And then it becomes easier to get through there, but... It's still not easy, because sometimes they'll have them, like, set up in a triangle, and they're the mines, so, like, you step in the right side of the hallway, you still get blown up, you walk in the middle, you get blown up, or you walk on the other side, you get blown up. And it doesn't kill you right away, of course, because it only takes away so much health. But I just... 
these kind of games are so much fun because this would almost definitely be something that if they had it on like Nintendo or Game Boy, I definitely would have played it. And see, here's all the different things you can upgrade. Speed, shield regen, you get a re shield later on. Uh, regeneration, always a good thing to do. And the trap, of course, to be able to see. And yes, you do regenerate health slowly over time, depending on how fast your uh, regeneration is. But you find a bunch of different uh, first aids and they'll heal you up quite a bit. And then you can just kind of sit and wait for a bit until your health goes back up. But it's like, the other thing is, is like all of the different things that happen in this game, just having to attack all of your crewmates or having to try and figure out how to get past um, different uh, robots that are there to protect the area is just so much fun. And just unlocking the story a little bit more as you go along and seeing all the different funny things that your other crewmates say, like, get away from me, or there's a certain movie coming on later on that's on their version of Netflix, so they can't wait to see it. It's just so much fun to sit down and spend at least a half hour or so on some of these games, and I think this playthrough here is about a half hour long, and I get through the first three levels, so each one's about ten minutes long-ish. Uh, also, depending on how many times you get killed by either the boss or the different booby traps or whatever. And so it can definitely vary from time to time. And see on the map there, that big red square, that's the area I'm trying to get to. And of course the door's locked to where I need to go. This gun here might be kind of slow when it shoots, but the fact that it takes away like five health whenever it shoots them, it makes it a little bit better. And then some of the other guns you get, they'll take off like two points or so per hit. And they'll do a lot of them in a row, so it might be kind of uh, faster to kill them that way. But like two shots from this gun will kill those regular insane people or zombies or whatever you want to call them. I kind of think of them as zombies. Oh man, I just love playing this game so much and it's definitely fun. And it is kind of short, it only has like somewhere around like 30 to 40 levels so you could probably get through it pretty quick but it's always fun to go through the different characters and try and level them up to get them better and be able to make it through the game and just the story itself of this and what's happening just makes it so much fun and then later on when you go through and you actually play endurance it makes a little bit more sense and in a way, it's like some of the other space games out there, like Dead Space, where you would have the movies that came out before the game, or after the game came out, they had the movie, and then the movie was basically the prequel of everything that happened on that ship. Or you have, um... Oh, shoot, what's the game in Alien? Uh where you play as Ripley's daughter and it, it's not really a prequel but it's something that kind of follows up the alien story and it's that kind of game too where you go through and you see it from a different angle if that makes sense I don't think I've really tried the multiplayer on this, um, 
I think it's an old enough game that not really many people play it anymore, and so not many people play on the multiplayer area, but I know you can probably set up your own game and sit around and hope that somebody else shows up, but just the fact that it can also be a single player game makes it that much better. Too. And I always love when you can have a game that's either multiplayer or single player, like the Imposter 3D game that I did a video on not too long ago. I can go through that and make it so that I'm just playing with the other um, AI monsters and make it through there. But yeah, I mean, just the different percentage of the map you can look through, it'll let you know how much of it you've explored. Um, the different guns you can find, like here's kind of a machine gun type one, I think they called it a steamer, which makes me laugh for no different reason. But yeah, I mean, it's just so much fun to get lost in this game and to be able to see all the, the different um, insane people you come across, or zombies, if you want to call them that. But it's just so much fun to play this game and get lost. It definitely gets harder as you get further into the game because there's going to be, like I said, booby traps that come up that you have to try and see, or um, I think you can shoot them and that'll set them off. And there's also going to be areas where there's going to be electricity that shoots across the room and travels back and forth for a bit, then short circuits out, and you're going to have to try and wait and see when that happens. And then later on, you can go through in certain areas and shut off all of the different baby traps and the electric uh, shooting across the floor. So it'll make it a little bit easier, but then I think they also will have more enemies come at you, so it definitely makes it that much harder. Alarms are activated. R-E-I-G-N and it's white gummy bear flavored so it's actually really good. I've been kind of spreading out my trying of different energy drinks just to see which ones are more fun but of course I still kind of stick with my monster and my uh, coca-cola coffee drinks and I still love the vanilla one. So, if you ever get a chance to try it, definitely do that. Oh, and kind of speaking of video game type things too, one of my favorite things that I used to watch as a pup that I have found on one of the archive channels and if you ask me about it later in either my discord or um, in YouTube so I'll let you know where you can find this but I did find a place that had a bunch of the old Captain N the Game Master shows and so I downloaded at least six of them right now and I'm watching I'm about halfway through it, because I think they only had like six episodes in that one. So I've gotten through at least three of them, and I forgot how much fun that show can be, and just kind of changes your mind on the different characters that are out there. Um, you have Mega Man in there, uh, Kid Icarus, uh, Simon from Castlevania, who is just in love with himself. I mean, he's kind of like the Gilroy Lockhart of the Nintendo world when you watch him in the show. And it's definitely a hilarious. And if anybody hasn't seen that cartoon, the premise is like the gaming world is in danger from a person called Mother Brain. And 
what they're doing is trying to take over, of course, and uh, one of her main henchmen is uh, King Hippo from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, and I forget who the other character is and what game he's from, but I know he has to be. But there's a kid in the Earth area that can warp into the place and help them out. And in the first episode, he's actually kind of reluctant to help them, but he he has his dog with him, and uh, the princess of the area gets trapped, and so he has to save her, and some people think he's trying to save her to be the good guy, but he's saving her originally so he can make it back home, and he just has so many different adventures in the game land. And you get to see so many different lands from the other games from Nintendo. Like, there's one that I think was called Bayou Billy that he goes to. You get to see Castlevania, what it looks like. You get to see a bit of the Metroid land and as he's trying to get the princess out and everything. So it's definitely fun. And they're really short cartoons. They're about 25 minutes long or so. And that shows you about the differences between shows now and shows then. Because if you look at the running time of shows, like when I was growing up in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, would be about the time I would consider myself growing up. And the TV shows back then would usually have a running time of like 27 minutes to 25 minutes. So you would have like three to five minutes worth of commercials. And nowadays, if you look at the running time of most TV shows that are about a half hour, you get about 21 minutes worth of show. And so you only, you get nine minutes worth of commercials. And it's just so weird when you look at it that light. I mean, there was just... There's a reason why a lot of us say they don't make shows the same way they used to. And some people who have seen some of my other videos where I go through some of the older shows, um, especially back in like the 1940s, 50s, 60s, a lot of them would try and do shows and they would somehow kind of mix the commercial in with the show. Like, uh, they would suddenly have them sitting in the breakfast table area in the kitchen, and he would start going off about, like, Kellogg's or Ovaltine or something like that. So, it was just so much different back then. Instead of just cutting away to an instant commercial, you would kind of be led into it. And whoever the sponsor was at the time would definitely get the first commercial they would talk about, like Crest, when they had the um, powder for your teeth before it was made into a paste or something like that. Or you would have like the Lipton uh, tea or Campbell's soup. And so the characters would suddenly jump into their commercial mode and explain what the product was and why it was so much better for you. Have a bowl of this and you can make it all the way till lunchtime and your energy will never go down. So that just kind of made it more fun. But just the fact that now you have to sit through if you watch regular TV, but who really does that too much anymore? But you would get like nine minutes worth of commercials and I know people complain about some of the commercials on YouTube or some of the other streaming services where it's free like you get Tubi or something like that and they want to complain about the commercials there and it's like I understand commercials can be annoying but I mean that's the way they're gonna make their couple of cents or whatever and be able to keep running free and you have to sit through maybe, what, three minutes there for commercials a couple of times during the episode. And so, there are times also when you can sit there and skip it after a few seconds, so it, it's not all that bad. And I still think it's kind of weird with some of the 
much way they do shows on cable nowadays, especially when you're able to fast forward through commercials, especially if it's like, uh, I know at my friend Angel's house, her daughter would watch cartoons a lot on TV, and we would have it on either like Disney Junior or Nick Junior or the CBS Kids, and a commercial would come up and she would suddenly complain, oh, mommy, turn fast forward through the commercials. And so they would fast forward it, and it's like, whoa, when did you get to be able to fast forward through commercials? That's crazy to me. And it's, oh man. It just makes me think of so much stuff from back in my day. Like, especially when you were able to record shows off of TV. Like, you could record a movie, hook your VHS up to a TV, and hook the cable through the VCR, and then you could record whatever was on HBO or Showtime or Nickelodeon or whatever you were going to record, and you would be able to do that. And sometimes with some of those, they would have the commercials come on, and uh, I would try and pause the recording during the commercial, and then kind of lose track of what I was doing and the show would come back on for a couple of seconds and I would forget oh no I have to hit record so sometimes there would be like 10 seconds missing from the show and I would watch it back later on on tape and it'd be like oh man I keep forgetting to restart it after the commercials but that was always just kind of funny to me I would always try and record things during like the Saturday Night Nickelodeon and I would have so much fun with that because I loved watching things like Are You Afraid of the Dark or my favorite Nicktoons was definitely Doug and so I would sit there and watch all of those and try and record them and there are other shows on there too like uh, Clarissa Explains It All was definitely one of my favorite ones with uh, Melissa Joan Hart or you had the Adventures of Pete and Pete, which was definitely a fun show. So, I mean, there were so many things back on Nickelodeon back then that just, I know most kids today wouldn't be able to make sense of it, especially with a show like Pete and Pete. But, I mean, if you sit down and watch it, and, uh, if you're especially a younger child and you're watching it with your parents, uh, when we're watching Pete and Pete, that's kind of our childhood right there. Because, I mean, the kind of stuff they did in that show were things we did as kids, like riding up the street to your friend's house, and if you weren't sure where your friends were, you would ride around to your different friend's house, and suddenly you would see, like, five or six bikes parked out in their front yard or in their driveway, and that's how you knew your friends were there just so, so much of a different time back then. I'm sorry I'm going off on a ramble as I'm playing this, but I mean, it's, a lot of this is kind of repetitive with like shooting these things here or shooting the other zombies. And it, it does pick up later on in the game too, a lot more. And so I'm sorry, I just always want uh, I figured, hey, it couldn't hurt to sit down and talk about different things I'm watching. Like I said, I'm also watching Captain N, and another one I found on the Archive uh, channel was uh, the Patty Duke Show. And that was one of the shows on the... Um, I remember a lot of it being on the Saturday night, uh, or the Nick at Night. Not Saturday night, but Nick at night, because after like 8 o'clock at night, Nickelodeon would suddenly go to the kind of more adult shows, like they would have like My Three Sons, or um, the Patty Duke show, and things like that, so they would go to Nick at night, and that would be more for the parents. But I always enjoyed watching those shows with with my grandma and my great aunt when they were watching me as a pup and definitely grew up watching a lot of those, especially like Golden Girls and Frasier and things like that. So being able to sit down and 
I think they have like three seasons of the Paggy Doom show. <laughs> Sorry, let me get a quick drink real quick. But I watched through, I think now, about 10 episodes of it, and there's like 36 episodes in season one. So I got a bit of ways to go to get through it. But I'm definitely going through it and having a good time and just remembering how much simpler TV was back then. I mean, it didn't have to have all the scandal and all of the risque things that happen on TV nowadays and all the lying, but it definitely still had a little bit of drama, not really deadly drama or anything like that, but you know, it's just lighthearted fun. And Patty, the Patty Duke show, if you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely give that one a try. I remember having a biggest crush on um, the cousin of Patty Duke in the show, just because of how soft-spoken she was and just how cute she seemed. But they were supposed to be identical cousins that were living together and it kind of had like that parent trap kind of feel to me so I definitely had a good time watching that show and it reminded me of a book that I had read too which was called like um Double Trouble and it was like two twins that go to school and they have different like uh hijinks that happen while they're at school they switch places during class or um one is better at a certain subject so they'll take a test for their other one later on uh they have a cousin i think that shows up that's identical to them too so there's three of them and uh, i tried looking it up online but for some reason they can't find it online and i just remember the name of the book being Double Trouble for one of them and it was twins uh, blonde haired girls but I just cannot find it and I don't remember the author and at the time I think I was like maybe around uh, fifth grade when I had read them and it was just one of those books where just the hijinks that happened got me hooked on to it But yeah, there are just so many different shows out there that I'm finding again and sitting down and re-watching and just remembering how much fun each show was. And like I said, if you get a chance to sit down and watch Patty Duke, go ahead and give that show a look-see. Um, I also found uh, Mr. Ed, so I'm going to try and download some of those later on and go through and re-watch them. Um, I did get the first episode and second episode, I just haven't gotten a chance to sit down and watch it yet. But I'm definitely going to, and I can't wait to do that, because I remember loving Mr. Ed a lot. And just having a talking horse and all of the weird things that happened with him and Wilbur. Just so much fun. And having a horse that will talk on the phone definitely a lot better. <laughs> I think that's one of my favorite things with this game too, is like when you come across a room like this and then they have a bunch of the other enemies come through. Depending on where you stand, you can just sit there and let them kill themselves. And that's just so much easier. And you don't waste your ammo, your gun doesn't break, and unless they blow up next to you, they're not really going to hurt you as bad. But I mean, I just love being able to run through these different levels like this, and you come across those different cabinets, and being able to try and open them up, and it's like, just kind of has a weird Metroid feel a little bit to it, especially where an area is locked until you go to a different spot, like the little red areas are the machines you have to get to to open up those doors. That was weird. That body just fell over for no reason at all. At all. At all. Ow. 
Oh my gosh, Jack, you're here. Sam, thank God. Uh, I thought you were one of them. You saw what happened. We need to get out of here. But Jack, I don't understand how the hell is this happening. Sorry, it's all going way too fast. I should have taken my time when recording this. <laughs> yeah, and at other times you'll run into areas where you'll have a companion that can go with you and be able to help you out. And as long as they're not a complete idiot, and usually AI kind of is, they'll just walk into the different booby traps and get themselves blown up like that right there. Freaking moron. Yeah, I can see a landmine sitting right there, so I'm just gonna walk straight into it. La -dee -da. Oh my god. Okay, so we're gonna have to go in on it a I'm sorry, I've been babbling so much about different shows that I'm watching, but I mean, a lot of this is going to be just running around in the maze of the spaceship and trying to find ways to open the doors or to get to the next area. So, I mean, why not talk about some of the shows that I've been watching, and other ones that I'm going to watch. <laughs> I know I only make it up to around level 3 or so in this, and there's like 30-some levels, so I mean, maybe I'll go through and make another video of this. Haha, -ha, my money's at 666. Not anymore. But for a moment there, my money was the mark of the beast. Dun dun dun. Or 616, depending on which area you believe with the translations and things like that. unlock a door and you look at the map um, it'll show you which door you unlock so right there All right. but yeah this game is just especially if you do like RPGs and you do like kind of horror games and things like that this is definitely a fun game to pick up the controls are really easy to get used to um, they're a little weird when you're trying to move around especially if you're walking one direction and you suddenly switch to a different direction but then it just kind of oddly freezes up Oh, here's one of the weird boss battles that kind of happens. I almost wish I could get the gun that they have. I think it's like, are those grenades? Or... I definitely would love to be able to use those, especially against like when you get 15 of the things trying to come at you at the same time. just buy health if you really need it. And it's like 200 points to heal up. But yeah, definitely, if you ever get a chance to, definitely pick this game up. And I do not think that you would be disappointed. Owie, 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 owie. The other good thing too is like when you get to the end of the area and they'll ask you, you know, do you want to move on or do you want to explore the ship some more where you're at, and you can always pick that option to explore more, especially if you haven't gotten a hundred percent of the map explored and you can also stop and wait for your life to heal all the way back up if you need it to, so it definitely makes it that much easier. But 
like I've been saying, the story of this game is fun. The different comments that your other crewmates make are fun also, especially if they say they want coffee, or if you accidentally push them while you're walking, they'll sit there and say, oh, stop pushing me, or don't touch me, or get away from me. And that's just so much fun with this game, just all the different nuances of this. And it's a very simple like I said, just shooting zombies, making it to the next area, unlocking doors and things like that is definitely fun. I do hope you guys did enjoy kind of watching me play the game, and I really do like this game, especially being able to choose between the different characters and trying to power them up as much as I can, or getting the guns and trying to get uh, upgrades on them every chance you can get. It's just so much fun to be able to go through this game and explore how big the ship is. and. For such a small game, it has a lot to do. I mean, it, it's a very small file, if I remember right. All systems Clear 
it says how big of a file it is. But I have a couple other games like this, like there's the um, other version of the game of what actually happens later on, and then I have one that I think is called Death Road to Canada, and it's kind of like a zombie RPG, and there's another one I have called the Oregon Trail, which is kind of like the Oregon Trail, but with zombies instead, and you do the same kind of thing in that, where you're trying to hunt for food, or you're trying to find whatever... Uh, equipment you need to fix your car, to keep your family healthy, get food, get gas, things like that, and you're traveling across the country. And, and I think if I can, I might try and make a video of that one too. Because it's definitely a fun one, and it has more of an arcade, or not arcade, but um, uh, Atari type feel to it so that makes it a little bit more fun there too and so I really want to be able to do that one and with it being a zombie game uh, actually both of them being zombie games they're a lot of fun for me because I just love the zombies as far as most of you know because Night of Living Dead and Return to Living Dead being two of my favorite movies out there and so, I will definitely have to try and record the other two games and see if the sound will play, or um, if I have to, I know a weird way I can record it, but it's not as easy. But, you guys are worth the trouble of getting it all done and putting it together, so thank you so much for watching and having fun with me, and... I hope you didn't mind too much of the talk of the different shows that I'm watching because it's just, while you're playing a game like this, almost doing some of the same type of things in each area, you kind of can't just talk about that all the time and might as well talk about the shows I'm watching. So I hope you did enjoy it and if you did, please give it a like. The more that number goes up, the more people might see it, and the more people shall enjoy it. And of course, please drop a comment so we can feed that dreaded algorithm. We need to keep that thing fed, and I'll try and answer back as many as I can. And uh, I know my faithful listeners will definitely drop me a line, so that's always good. And I love it so much. And, of course, if you know anybody who likes gaming or mobile gaming or things like that, please share this video with them. Or, if anything else, they can find uh, fun with the um, vintage cartoons revisited or having fun with the radio shows, which I'm going to try later on to maybe see if that'll work. But, who knows. I'll figure something out here soon. I do have some more things on the back burner. And I'm sorry it took me a bit to get this one up. But I, I know a lot of you will wait for whichever next video of mine pops up. And I can't wait to share them all with you. I love all you bipeds, quadrupeds, and even the occasional dinosaurs so much. And if you want to help out even more, please remember when you go out, please continue to mask up. The healthier you are, and the healthier the rest of the area will be. If you get sick, then you won't spread anything around with wearing the mask, and so that helps out even more. And of course, you know, if you haven't done it yet, go out and get your vaccine or your booster shot, because the more your body knows to fight against these diseases out there, the easier it will be for you to stay healthier and fight it off if you ever do catch it. And of course, if you can, please keep trying social distancing. The further apart we are from each other, the harder it is to spread anything, the healthier we'll all be, and the herd will continue to stay strong. And we also have to keep the world safe for certain people out there that have allergies to the vaccines or anything like that. So we have to protect the cheetahs of the world. 
and I have a special one in here that I want to protect. So, until next time, Wolf out. All systems active.